Welcome to another Dorkler action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the White Bones Battle Wolf from D20 Studios. Alright, so right off the bat, let me just throw a couple of my initial reactions about this figure out there. One, it is gorgeous. I just love the sculpt work. The paint is good. These swap out parts are really neat. There's just a lot of like fun options with it in terms of display and the way you can kind of set it up. That stuff is great. The looks, the size, I mean, take a look at the size of this thing. That is huge. That's the Mezco 112 Collective Conan the Barbarian next to this D20 Wolf. So pretty massive wolf. It's the size of a horse, you know? Um, but I will say that the articulation is pretty disappointing on it. It's got a lot of number of points of articulation, but it just does not have great range and the joints are really stiff. So it's kind of a pain to move around and, the, and it's like just there's not enough range to make it worthwhile to spend time posing it because you're going to get it into like a slightly crouched or like a slightly different pose. The head slightly turned. The head turns fine, but there's just not a ton of range. So this will tend to be more of a display piece in my collection. You know, like a, like the Mythic Legion's trolls, I don't take my troll off of the shelf very often and pose it and stuff. It kind of just stays there on display. I may take a picture once in a while, but I'm not going to really do a lot of reposing or anything. And that's kind of how I feel about this. This was an expensive piece. It came in at $147, I believe, plus shipping. So it ended up being like $167 for me, something like that. So shipping was $20 bucks or so. Um, and I know on Big Bad Toy Store and some of the U.S. sellers, it's like closer to 200. I looked on Big Bad Toy Store and it was, I think it was 190. And then if I added my tax, that brings it up over 200. And, you know, then shipping or whatever. Although Big Bad Toy Store shipping is almost nothing. But yeah, I mean, that's an expensive piece. So if you're looking to pose and play with it a lot and articulate it, I, I'm going to just advise you right now to pass. But... If you're looking for a really cool looking, unique, just big, badass wolf mount for a lot of different figures in a lot of different sizes, um, pretty awesome. Highly recommend it for that. Anyway, let's get into this review. As always, let's start this off with a look at the packaging and it's a massive box. Like I barely got it on the table here. That's the front and here's the back. Nothing really on the back. On this side, you just have sort of credits info, a couple QR codes that I haven't scanned. And then on the bottom, there's nothing. This is a type of box with a uh, magnetic flap. Again, I apologize for not being able to fit this into the video. And then on the inside, you'll see it's got the uh, very premium feeling foam um, storage area. And that makes it feel very, very secure for a very heavy figure. I weighed the figure and the figure itself without the box is actually three and a half pounds. So <laughs> it's a heavy figure. So it's nice that it's got a nice secure box. Although I do have some messed up corner up top here from shipping. Not that they shipped it poorly. They actually packed it really well. They must have just completely dropped the box or crushed it. By the way, I bought it from 5K Toys. That's where I got it for 147. I, I think they have the next wave up, but they're I, those are just priced differently. They're a different kind of figure. Um, there's like a cheaper version and a more expensive version. But yeah, check out 5K Toys, Big Bad Toy Store. And there might be a few others that have it. Maybe, maybe Empire Toy Shop. Not 100% sure. And let's take a look at the sculpt paint in detail. There's a lot going on with this figure. All of these parts, the, the mask, the um, armor bits, the saddle, all of that stuff is very easily removable. And they all sort of pat, peg on or tab in. And there's a few other little bits and pieces that are removable. It's got this nice metal chain here with like a bone handle for the um, rider to hold on to. And the bone work is pretty good. It's got some, like, actually pull this right off. So this piece actually just sits sort of on the ears like this. Everything else pegs on. And the, um, the chain is attached here. So taking a look at the paint work here, it's really nice. And I don't know how well it's coming across in my um, 
in my video, but you know, you can see some nice details. It has a very bone-like kind of consistency to that sculpt and paint work. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool looking skull here from like, I don't know, like a saber tooth tiger or something like that. Or is this from a wolf or I don't, I don't know. I don't know what this would be from some kind of monster, but pretty cool looking. You can hear on my glass, um, you, know, you can hear the, the chains there, but yeah, so pretty cool mask. And that just sits right on his head, just like this. And it kind of rests on the ears right there. Now getting a look at the wolf itself, um, Painted pretty well, the eyes look good. Really aggressive sculpt work in the fur and all that stuff. Articulated jaw, so you can open and close the jaw and then just a little look inside the mouth right there. And uh, yeah, so it's, you know, the fur is really cool looking. There's not nice layers of paint with a, a wash and then a dry brush on top. And this is the gray wolf. There's also a white wolf. I only got the gray one, I didn't get both too expensive to be buying multiples of these things. And you can take a look here at the paws and the claws. They definitely have that paw feeling to them, the way the sculpt is over here. Um, I don't know, there's something dog-like, very dog-like about these right there. These armor pieces are removable via pegs and there's one on each leg, so there's four of those. And then here's a nice look at the saddle, and the saddle has some cool bone designs going on. I do have one little issue with the saddle, and it's this horn piece kind of pops off there, um, and it looks like it had been glued, but it actually stays in, like it pegs in and it doesn't really fall out, so I guess it's not a big deal, but just a, maybe a little QC issue. But here's another look at the saddle piece, which kind of goes on right here. I don't think you would ever really use the blanket without the saddle because of this giant peg right there, but that pegs on nicely and everything goes on and off really well. Like here's this piece, there's just a hole at the top there and that sort of pops right in and it stays pretty well. There's a few different stirrups that I'll talk about in the accessories. Um, again, just a lot of cool little leathery sculpt work going on. This is a separate piece. Take a look at the tail. I feel like the tail could be a little more detailed. Um, it's almost one solid color with a few little accents. Like right here, you can see a little bit of a redder color in that tail. And there's some rope details over here. And it's got some cool weapon storage options right here. And you can take these little pieces and pop them on or remove them. And then you could slide like a shield or a sword or something in there. And we got the stirrup on this side and some more little like silver metal details, various uh, bone details and so on. And a quick look at the piece on the back legs. Overall, it's a really cool wolf to look at and I like both options. And this is, this is where I'm gonna be kind of like, man, should I have gotten two? Um, because I kind of want to display it both ways. Uh, but yeah, I don't think I can afford another one. They're too expensive. Anyway, let's take a look at this thing next to some other figures with some figures on top of it. And then after that, I'll take it apart and I'll do the articulation and go through all the parts that are with it. Okay, first of all, here it is next to a Mythic Legion's horse. There is Balius. That's really the only other mount that's of a similar scale that I have. The only other horses I have are from Boss Fight and those are 118th scale. So, you know, both of these figures are 112th scale uh, mounts for figures and you can see they're very comparable in size the wolf however has a lot more bulk and it is a lot heavier than the horse i will say that the horse in my opinion is a better figure it's just a better um experience to play with it and all that stuff and it's just a little bit more i don't know universal and iconic so i definitely prefer the mythic legions horse especially at, for the fact that it's only one third of the price 55 versus 150 I mean, that's that's a big difference. So just putting that out there right now. And then let me just do a couple other figures standing next to the wolf, and then we'll put some on top of the wolf. Okay, so I think this is a pretty cool match. First up, we have Skeletor from the Masters of the Universe movie from Super 7. I think he looks great. He looks okay on there. I'm having trouble getting the Super 7 Ultimates figures on there because of the way their legs turn. They don't quite turn correctly and they look a little goofy on there, but um, 
standing next to it, I think Skeletor looks kind of perfect. And here again is the Mezco 112 Collective Conan the Barbarian. And here's how it scales next to an ogre scale figure. This is Balthor the Tower from Mythic Legions with a Max Bird cape. Here he is next to a Mezco 112 Collective Hazard Squad Gold Commander. And here's the Tamashi Nation Samurai Boba Fett from the movie Realization Line. Mafex, Batman the Dark Knight Returns. And here he is next to a standard Mythic Legions figure, Romulus. Okay, now let's take a look at him with some figures on him. And I'm starting off right now with Mezco Gomez. Also, just note that I'm not going to swap out these stirrups every time. I should put the shorter ones on for him. Well, I'm not going to mess around with the stirrups too much while I just try the different sizes of figures. But there he is with Mezco Gomez. Here is what I think might be possibly the best fit size-wise, though not stylistically, and that is the Storm Collectibles Golden Axe Axe Battler, which I believe is probably going to be somewhere around the same size as the Mythic Legion's Brute Scale figures. So I'm kind of thinking, eventually when I get that Orc Tharnog, that has all those bones and stuff thematically with him, I think that may end up being my final guy that goes on this mount. Here is Super 7 Thulsa Doom from the Conan movie. And I think this looks pretty good, but again, the legs are a little weird with these figures and the way they kind of like fit on there. So I don't think they totally look awesome from the leg standpoint, but stylistically, these match up really well with this with this wolf. And finally, here's a look at the Mythic Legion's Vorthog on top of this D20 wolf. All right, now I'm gonna mess with the parts and show you what all is removable so we can consider this sort of the accessories segment. So again, this does not peg on, it just kind of comes right off. Pretty cool looking piece right there. This piece does peg on and it leaves a hole right there and I'll show you um, what goes in that hole. And here's another look at that neck piece. And the underneath of it, it's got that angled peg. The top of the saddle piece comes off. And I already kind of showed that earlier. These stirrups can be removed. And he comes with this pair here compared with these with the single peg right there. And those are a little bit shorter. So I can just show you one next to the other. Um, it's a little bit shorter. So depending on which figure you use, you can have a different sized stirrup. And then, like I said, this thing's heavy. And then underneath here, the saddle is removable through a couple different pegs. Um, and they're actually hidden pretty well. Like, so, so that's an actual peg, not just a deco. And those are actual pegs as well. So this peg just pops right off here. And then this is a separate piece. And this peg pops off a little bit differently. This one comes over the top like this. And it pops off there. And then this saddle can come right up. And one other little detail about this saddle, we have this piece here that hooks on with some crow skulls. And then this piece here, um, which actually has a little bit of a storage compartment for this piece. This is really neat. Uh, so this piece actually plugs in at the top here so that you can kind of hide that peg hole when you have the when you have that neck piece off of there. So that's pretty cool to have a little, little piece to cover that up right there. And finally, these four um, leg armor pieces come right off. They have two pegs and all four of them peg on exactly the same. These pegs right here just push right in and those two spots right there on the sides. He also comes with some extra pegs and discs. And I just hope to God that I never have to have to deal with swapping discs out on this figure, but they're there just in case. And here's a nice look at the wolf silhouette with all the gear off. I can kind of swing them around. I'm sorry I don't have my fancy um, turntable, but he just does not fit on that thing. You hear me, Noah? You're going to have to make some more big ones. So there's a good look at the wolf. There's his tail. It's pretty cool. I think somebody should take this thing and stand it next to that new 3016 snake eyes because I have a feeling it would look really cool and probably just the right size for a six scale wolf. All right, so let's get into the articulation and this is probably my biggest gripe with the figure is the articulation. I mean, the figure looks great. It's got a lot of cool parts, some pretty cool looks you can do with it, but it just doesn't move well. It has quite a few points of articulation. However, they don't amount to much when it comes down to like how how many different poses you can do with him. But the head is on a ball joint and it can look up and down um, and side to side. 
and it can turn a little bit, but it can't really look up. And I kind of thought maybe this piece up here would shimmy or move up, but this does not do anything. As far as I can tell, this piece here doesn't do anything. It's just static. It's just over the top and it might even be just glued on. But yeah, so the head, you know, a little bit of range, can't look up really well. And so he's always kind of in this down looking pose as if he's like going to attack somebody on the ground. That's about as high as you're going to get him to look up right there. And the jaw is articulated, which is a nice touch. I like that. The front legs use a sort of a barbell joint. Um, so there is a little bit of wiggle room there to go sideways and, and to sort of go in and out like this. That ball joint can almost go all the way around. Um, it can swing, you know, pretty far forward and back. And I don't know if I can get it around without having it pop off, but can at least get it that far forward. And man, this figure is like sharp. Like I'm getting beat up. I'm not getting any twist over here. I don't know if it's possible to twist it. I, I think perhaps not, um, but you can hear how tight these joints are. I mean, you can hear that. And um, the range can take you from pretty much a fully straight leg like this all the way up, all the way up to here. Again, this thing is like, it's a pain to articulate. Um, it's a lot of work. The articulation in the feet works really well, actually, compared to all the other joints. There's like a, an angled rocker and it can point up and it can point down. And the hind legs, I believe they just swivel. I don't think there's that um, angle. I don't think there's any motion in or out, just swivel back and forth. And we have another super tight disc at that back knee area. You can swing it that much. And then the, the, the lower part of the leg can swing up to there. And so generally speaking, you're going to have him in a position where his leg is like this pretty much. And then the same kind of rocker for the feet on the back and the tail. There's a ball joint at the top of the tail. And then there's a couple ball joints here and here. So decent range of motion in the tail and you could swing it around if you want the tail, um, you know, sticking up like this when it comes down to it. And you saw me working on that thing. Um, it's just a real pain in the butt and there aren't a lot of poses. Like you can't get him, you can't get him up in any way. You can't really get him sitting. Um, you can get him like a little bit hunched down a little bit lower, or you can get him maybe standing a little bit taller and that's pretty much it. Just like a taller pose and a hunched down pose. And there's not much else you can do with the articulation. But this is a good looking wolf. It just doesn't move well. Um, I mean, that's really my only gripe. For the money, I was hoping it would have a little bit more of a smoother articulation and maybe just feel a little better, like a little, you know, a little less like nerve wracking to, to, to do those discs. But it doesn't feel like it's going to break apart. It doesn't feel it's a big, heavy, sturdy figure. Like I said, this thing weighs over three pounds. It's like three and a half pounds. So it's pretty big. It's very massive. I'm going to have a lot of fun taking pictures of it. I don't know though that I'm going to be doing a lot of posing with it. Just sort of like put the saddle on it, put some riders on it, maybe have him attacking somebody like, you know, laying on the ground perhaps like this. Um, but you know, I guess you could have him up on a figure with his head down, you know, maybe with his paw like this or something. Anyway, that's my review. I apologize for some of the awkwardness. This thing is massive and it's really hard to, to grapple on the review table. But anyway, until next time, may the force be with you. Follow me.